All right, let's bring in CBS uh, sports uh, writer, combat writer, Brian Campbell. And hey, Brian, I got to give you kudos here as we looked uh, ahead at this Bellator 258 card. You had the uh, main event going the way of uh, Sergio Pettis, and it certainly went that way via unanimous decision. Let's start there, your impressions of this fight. Yeah, this was a graduation in many terms for the 27-year-old Pettis. Disciplined, poised, everything you would want out of a mature fighter. We've known uh, Anthony Pettis' little brother, right, for so many years through his UFC days. But this was him making his own name on his own terms against a very game Juan Archuleta. We knew this fight was going to be high pace. We knew it had potential to be exciting. It was a little bit more technical than exciting, mm -hmm. though, in the end. And I think the big difference in that regard was Pettis was so sharp with his counter shots. He had used Archuleta's aggressiveness almost against him in a lot of ways. And once it became apparent that Archuleta, if he was able to take Sergio Pettis down, wasn't able to keep him there, he was going to have to win this fight on the feet. And I thought Pettis was too quick, too smart, too patient. It was a masterful performance. A hey, BC, uh, Rumble Johnson making his Bellator debut uh, against Jose Augusto. And this was an interesting fight, right? Johnson stunned in the opening round and then takes him out early in a round two. Your impressions of how this one played out. Here's what's crazy is when Yoel Romero pulled out of this original fight, we were all upset yeah. thinking, there goes the theatrics. Right. We had all that and then some in this one. And what we learn about Rumble Johnson, the 37-year-old, coming off a four-year retirement that... Uh, meet the new Rumble. In a lot of ways, it's the same like the old one, right? He will <laughs> knock you out if he has the opportunity. But we all saw a little bit of rust. Let's be honest. This was a five-round fight that only went a round and a half, but it was crazy and high-paced. And even though Jose Augusto, who predicted he would knock mm -hmm. Rumble out, hurt his right hand early in this fight, and it seemed to change the tenor of it, he caught an aggressive Anthony Johnson coming in, left hook to wobble him, two-punch combination to drop him, nearly cinched the submission. Here was a game guy who was willing to gamble and go for it. But like you and I said coming into this fight, that's a risk when you gamble against Rumble Johnson. He never gassed out. He stayed the course. And when that right-hand opening was there, he filled it out on the way down, head bouncing off the canvas. This is what this tournament needed. Rumble Johnson, the big free agent, probably the biggest name in the draw. Well, he just splattered an opponent. He'll get the champion, Vadim Nemkov, next. That's Bellator, right. despite all the craziness, has to be happy about that. Yeah, it was interesting. Rumble didn't even recall getting stunned in the opening round after the uh, with the post-fight interview. The other uh, matchup to focus on, Peter Queeley. He, with a TK over, over Patricky Pitbull, the gash on Pitbull's head, too much to overcome there. Your thoughts on how this one played out? Yeah, bad luck here for Patricky yeah. Pitbull, who takes the TKO loss. Yet I thought he controlled a lot of it. The judges had it split on two sides, and one judge had Queely on top. But you see, this was a takedown successful from Patricky Pitbull, but he got hit with a trio of elbows. Some, including Pitbull's team, thought they were 12 6 elbows, the illegal one. Either way, Queely opened up a cut above uh, Patricky's eye, opened one on the hairline that would not stop bleeding. You see the cage side doctor right there. That was it. Just like that, Queeley not only gets a big win, yeah. he's from SBG in Ireland, same camp as Conor McGregor, but he's calling for a title shot against <laughs> Patricky's younger brother, Patricio, once he gets through with the Featherweight World Grand Prix. So given the history between the two yeah. camps, it'll be interesting to see where Patricio goes next. Yeah, he's looking to take out the family, if you will, there. Uh, you know, Michael Page, MVP, uh, what can you say? Uh, this was awfully impressive. This is a star in the making. TKO of Derek Anderson. Everything he showed, all the skills in a stoppage in this one. And it was ugly, the face of Anderson in this one. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, he destroyed Anderson with this kick, busted his nose, broke it, led to a doctor's stoppage after the first round. But what we what do we say about MVP coming in? He can do things in a cage that very few people can. He's a video game highlight reel type fighter. Sometimes that reputation, though, makes his critics question if he can go to the top with this style. Well, it worked against a red hot Anderson, who is a complete fighter in his own right, looking to get in the title picture. Now you've got Michael Page. Has the record for most knockouts in Bellator history. Five fight winning streak since his only loss. To whom? Current Bellator yep. welterweight champion. 
Douglas Lima. Lima has a title defense coming up in June against Yaroslav Amosov. If he passes that test, you have to believe MVP is next. Considering how that one ended, right? Knockout loss for MVP against uh, Douglas Lima. I'd love to see this a second time. The CBS Combat Sports writer Brian Campbell. BC, it was great to be back with you, man. Thank you. And of course, Brian, for all things combat, is who the check out. Check out the Morning Combat podcast with him and Luke Thomas. You can watch the series on YouTube. You can also listen to the podcast on Apple and Spotify. Morning Combat, download and subscribe today. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.